Hey folks, this is a very short video on uh, breast malignancy and especially for the exam revision purposes. So before talking about the biopsy and the malignancy uh, and the surgical aspect of the breast malignancy, let's talk about the axillary lymph node groups and their levels because this is the most important part uh, for the exam purposes and even for the surgery aspect. So uh, before talking about the groups, let's talk about the uh, um, um, before talking about the level, sorry, let's talk about the groups, the yeah, axillary lymph node groups. As we know, uh, there are around six uh, groups of the axillary lymph nodes. Yeah, so each group has around four to six, uh, four to seven uh, lymph nodes each group, and uh, the apical here's the apical uh, lymph node group of the axillary uh, uh, lymph nodes. It has it can has uh, maximum. 12 to 13 uh, lymph nodes too yeah so let's talk about these groups there are around six subgroups for this axillary lymph nodes the first one is your axillary vein group which is also named as lateral group what and here is the one so this group has around four to six lymph nodes in it and why is it called lateral because uh, it is as you can see um, it is the most lateral group out of all these axillary lymph nodes which have drawn dark dark in color so this is the most lateral one and uh, uh, its position is location is posterior to the axillary vein as we know axillary vein is a continuation of your uh, subclavian vein and uh, its position is somewhere posterior to the axillary vein and uh, this group uh, of axillary vein group or lateral group of the axillary lymph nodes it receives its uh, 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 lymph drainage from the upper extremity yeah so this is the axillary vein group then let's talk about the second one the external memory group yeah it is also called the anterior group and here's the position of it uh, it is it, it also has around four to seven lymph nodes in it and its position is anterior that's why it is called anterior group and uh, uh, its location is somewhere posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle here is the pectoralis minor muscle and here is the pectoralis major muscle which i've drawn here so its position is somewhere posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle and this is the anterior group and uh, it's, uh, uh, it receives its uh, lymph drainage uh, from the uh, lateral aspect of the breast from this side. All of the, this side is drained into this one, external memory group. And it is called anterior because as you can see it is anterior, anteriorly located. And uh, this was the second group. Then let's talk about the third group our third group is your uh, scapular group which is the posterior group too yeah and it is posterior group uh, um, first of all it is called uh, scapular group because it is contiguous with your uh, subscapular vessels yeah so here is the subscapular vessel um, coming out of your axillary vein over here so uh, so location of this is somewhere posterior it's somewhere near to your scapula yeah and uh, so that's why it is known as the scapular group also or posterior group also and um, it basically it receives um, drainage from your posterior trunk and uh, posterior aspect yeah so this is your scapular group then the and it's all about the subscapular vein which is coming so its location is contiguous uh, is near is some that's why it is uh, near to your subscapular vein so that's why it is called subscapular subscapular group also or scapular group or posterior group yeah then we have the fourth one the central group here's the central group and the central group uh, this is the central group and central group position is somewhere posterior and uh, above somewhere somewhere posterior to your uh, this thing uh, pectoralis minor muscle as we as you can see we hardly talk about the pectoralis major muscle because uh, pectoralis major muscle is the superficial superficial one so here's the pectoralis minor so don't you confuse pectoralis major with minor so in relation most of the time when we talk about the axillary muscles or if we talk about the uh, sorry not axillary muscle if we talk about the groups or levels we talk about uh, in relation to uh, in relation to a pectoralis minor muscle so here's the central group central group is somewhere uh, behind posterior to this pectoralis minor muscle and uh, this one central group is the one which receives this uh, drainage from your uh, subscapular subscapular uh, group 
from your uh, axillary vein group and even from your um, uh, this thing uh, external memory group yeah so central one so central one receives from all three of these drainage yeah they, they all drain into this one this these this central group yeah of lymph nodes then uh, the fourth one uh, sorry then the fifth one uh, we have uh, uh, the apical group here's the apical group and um, apical group is also known as the sub uh, uh, clavicular group because it's uh, below the clavicle uh, but it is behind the axillary vein uh, sorry subclavian vein and uh, it is post it is superior it is superior and medial to your uh, pectoralis uh, minor because pectoralis minor is somewhere here covering all this uh, which i haven't drawn because to just so that we can see so this apical group is behind and uh, medial and superior somewhere to your pectoralis minor and this is the main one this one receives uh, most of the uh, drainage from all of these uh, groups yeah and uh, then we have uh, so apical one is the important one too and um, this one which i already fourth one the your central one is somewhere location is uh, somewhere near to your it is for the apical fat all the fat which we have in this area yeah axillary fat so its location is somewhere uh, behind those axillary fat location and the last one which we have uh, which we have is your uh, uh, inter uh, interpectoral group here is the last one here is the sixth one and uh, its location is between the pectoralis major and minor and it receives directly drainage from uh, breast itself yeah so mm -hmm. these are the six group so here's the first recap um, here's the first one axillary vein group relation to your axillary vein yeah receives uh, uh, in uh, receives your drainage from upper extremity then second one we have for uh, your external memory group here um, which is the has the anterior location then we have the third one which is uh, here the subscapular group or the scapular group yeah which is also known as the posterior so this was posterior this is uh, your lateral this is your uh, anterior so and then we have the central central for the central itself and then fifth one we have the apical one uh, here it is and the last one we have your uh, this thing uh, interpedicular inter uh, sorry inter um, pectoral uh, inter uh, pectoralis group yeah so which is between your pectoralis major and minor major and minor yeah so these are the six uh, groups of your lymph nodes actually which are called axillary lymph node groups yeah so their drainage is very important and uh, uh, because it helps for the uh, surgical uh, mm, for the surgical standpoint of view so these are very important for the surgeon you know, for the exam purposes too now if we talk about these groups axillary lymph node groups they are divided further into levels yeah and uh, here it is so these groups these groups are divided into levels according to the um, relationship uh, to your pectoralis minor muscle yeah so in relation to the pectoralis minor muscles these groups are divide uh, these groups are uh, assigned in two levels yeah so of, here is the first level here is the second level here is the third level so first level of uh, these axillary lymph nodes would be anything any group which is found which is much more lateral or inferior to the pectoralis minor is assigned level one level two would be superficial or deep to this pectoralis minor and the third one would be superior or medial to pectoralis minor yeah so level one level two level three all in relation to your pectoralis minor so pectoralis minor group would be again lateral to the pectoralis minor group muscle pectoralis second level would be either deep or either superficial to pectoralis minor and third would be medial so it's uh, very much simple so again of course if we are talking about the level one so level one would be axillary vein group external memory group and the scapular group yeah so here you can see according to this also here is the one here's the two here's the three so these are basically much more lateral and uh, much more lateral and uh, inferior to your pectoralis minor so that's why 
these are uh, in, uh, together uh, combined and uh, named under the level one and then we have the level two uh, level two uh, would consist of the groups central and the interpectoral so here's the central and here's the interpectoral so these two would be uh, under the level two uh, and the third one would be your subclavicular here is the subclavicular or the epical and of course see here is the medial one so that's why it is assigned under the level three so these are the levels and the groups for the epical for the axillary lymph nodes and uh, further if we talk about the surgery uh, so before talking about the surgery let's talk about the biopsy now what happens is um, suppose uh, there's a palpable and, and suppose there's a palpable tissue you can palpate the node uh, in the breast so what the what the next step is suppose uh, if for the biopsy purposes what we can do is suppose you can uh, palpate any tissue palpate the node axillary lymph node yeah so what we will do is we will do fine needle uh, aspiration biopsy yeah cytology we will do that biopsy but with a fine needle yeah in that case because we could palpate uh, the axillary lymph node or the tissue yeah so in that case we will do the fnac and if the f after doing the fnac if the result comes it is positive then what we will do is we will do axillary axillary lymph node clearance we will remove try to remove as much of these lymph nodes as possible yeah so this is our main goal so suppose we palpate a tissue we palpate uh, we can palpate a um, breast tissue or any lymph node palpation is uh, can be felt we will do the fine needle biopsy yeah and after that if the result of the fine needle biopsy comes positive then we will remove all these axillary lymph nodes we will clear them so axillary clearance would be our next step yeah and suppose the fine needle biopsy the result comes it is a it is a negative then in that case we will do sentinel lymph node biopsy yeah in that case so we will do first the sentinel lymph node because the result of the fnac was negative so in that case we will do the sentinel sentinel lymph, lymph node biopsy it would be the, our first lymph node yeah after the dye injection of the dye so we will take the we will biopsy that lymph node the first lymph node and uh, we will biopsy that and plus we will uh, uh, remove the primary tissue yeah we will remove the primary uh, tumor which we could uh, palpate and which we could uh, feel so this is our main goal so but the main point is if we can palpate or not so and if suppose we can't palpate any axillary lymph node or uh, uh, axillary lymph node we can't palpate in that case we won't do fine uh, we, we won't do fine needle biopsy we would go straight to the sentinel lymph node biopsy because it of course if we can't palpate then there's no use of doing fine needle biopsy so it's that's why we need to search for the first if whether the uh, it has metastasis uh, meta uh, metastasis has taken place to the lymph nodes or not so in that case we will inject the dye and the first lymph node which we would get we would biopsy that and plus we will remove the primary uh, tissue primary uh, tumor yeah so these would be our uh, main target so it's important because we, we must know when to do fine needle biopsy and when not to do fine needle biopsy so fine needle biopsy we will do if we can palpate the tissue if we can sorry if we can palpate the axillary lymph node if we can't we will go straight to the sentinel lymph node biopsy all right and then let's talk about the few surgery uh, few three four types of surgery which we commonly see in our um, to excise the brain uh, excise the um, breast tissue breast tumor so the simple one the first one is simple uh, extended one in there are four of them main one so what we can do is we can do simple we can do modified radical helstead and uh, uh, your nipple areolar complex is sparing yeah so what is simple in simple what we do is we will remove all the breast so in simple what we will do is we will remove all the breast we will remove your this nipple and areolar tissue 
they are complex we will remove this we will remove breast we will remove all the skin in this area and we will remove level one so this is very important so that's why these levels are important we will remove all the axillary lymph nodes of this area comprising of the com which are in the lateral aspect of their pectoralis minor level one yeah so this is for the simple or the extended uh, mastectomy then the second one we have modified or radical uh, mastectomy also known as the pete mastectomy in that case also we will do the same as what we did in simple mastectomy extended simple mastectomy just in that but in pate what we will do is important point to remember is same it's almost same as we will remove all the breast tissue here we will remove uh, this uh, nipple and areolar complex we will remove the skin as well but here in this case as in, in simple we just removed one here we will remove all the lymph nodes level one level two level three yeah so this is our main target in the pate and uh, in the pate what as we know just for the so that to achieve uh, uh, these to excise these lymph node at the level three we must dissect this uh, pectoralis minor yeah so this is the main point in the pate uh, mastectomy yeah so we will divide this to reach somehow to these because these are uh, much more um, these are medial and uh, much more posterior to the pectoralis minor so uh, to reach this uh, group the level 3 group we need to divide this uh, pectoralis minor so this is the main uh, uh, point uh, about the pete mastectomy uh, it is a very nice surgery to be done and uh, i'll make another video especially just for the uh, all the steps in the mastectomy of the pate so but important point is in pate mastectomy we will remove all the levels all the levels and uh, we will leave um, uh, this even if even though if this uh, pectoralis minor has been divided we will uh, we will just divide it and uh, leave it in situ yeah so this is the pate mastectomy and the third one we have the Helstead mastectomy. Helstead mastectomy is almost same as the pate, but in this one, not only we will remove the pectoralis minor, we will remove uh, pectoralis major too. Yeah. So in these, in this case, muscles are being removed. So it's not a mm, good thing. Uh, but we will remove all the three levels. We will remove all the three levels of the uh, axillary lymph nodes. Plus we will remove the muscles. Yeah. Usually we don't remove muscles, but in the health stead, we will remove even pectoralis minor and even the pectoralis major, major muscles. So that's the important point. Yeah, so that's why it's a radical mastectomy too. Yeah, it's uh, uh, much more, very, very much extensive uh, operation. And uh, then we have the naso, uh, no, sorry, um, your allural and uh, nipple complex sparing. So we can leave this aspect. We can leave this aspect and uh, that's also done is getting uh, popular these days so we will that's another kind of operation so overall this is all about the breast malignant lesions and uh, it's a few points according to for the importance for the exam purposes all right thank you